So the question is, when somebody has a satori, an awakening, whether it's in their normal lives or in the satori group, and in fact a lot of us, are you listening to this, were actually in that state as a child. Not all children were in that state. But most of us were in that state. We don't remember. I would say most of the new children, the new babies, are in that state when they're born. And we lose it. When we're very young and we lose it, we don't remember. If we're in our teens and we have the experience and we lose it, we do remember. And then there's a longing to go back. Because it is just indescribably wonderful. Words like distress and problems don't exist. There's no opposite to them. It's just perfect. No fear of anything in any way. Absolute freedom. Everything is always wonderful. You and everything. And then that goes away. And in a way, it's almost worse if you've had it and it's gone away, because now you realize what's possible and you're not there. What usually happens in, then is the person tries to go back to the same state. But of course, everything is different every moment. That state was appropriate, was perfect for that moment, with that person, in that situation. So trying to go back to the same state in the same way is not appropriate. Let's take a look generally at going back to that state. You see, the mind picks up the crumbs of the experience, the dregs of the experience, and then says, I want to go back to that. So you're trying to go back to what your mind is projecting, and that's not that. That is beyond the capacity of the mind to comprehend. The mind cannot think that. The mind cannot experience that. That is synonymous with being beyond the mind. The mind is still there as an interpreter, but the actual, let's say, experience, non-experience experience is beyond that. So it's no good trying to go to where you think you need to go, because you can't see it. In the Satori group, the process is to frustrate you trying to answer the question. And the partner keeps pushing you to answer the question and you want to give up. No, keep going, keep going, keep going until giving up happens. Flash! And there you are. But not where you thought you were going. Just the opposite in a way. You're, you're somewhere else. And where are you? You don't know. You can't know. Because knowing is only of the mind. This is, it's not even an experience, because experiences, again, they're confined to the senses. This is beyond the senses. This is unexplainable. The Tao, the hidden harmony, the way, the kingdom of God, which doesn't mean anything. The peace of possible understanding. None of these things mean anything because there's no meaning to it. It just is. So don't go looking for it. So then you say, but I've been there and I'm not there now, so I must be doing something wrong. There is no such thing as wrong or right. There is only is. And what you're experiencing right now is exactly what you need to be experiencing. And when you need to be experiencing something else and you are unconditionally open, you'll be there. If you're trying to look for where you think you ought to be, you'll keep missing. 
Jesus gave a parable about that. He talked about the master going away. He talked in terms of hierarchy. The master going away and telling his servants, keep the candles burning because you never know when I'm coming back. That could be seen as stay awake, stay alert, but not with the old ideas. Be here, be now, listen, feel, and sense. And if it's appropriate for you to have that experience again, you'll find you're already in it. You might say, so how come it went away? Well, usually, what they say in the East is, you have not yet burned the seeds of desire. So although you're in that state, there are seeds of things you have not yet completed, which means you have not yet seen them in yourself and accepted them for the way they are. Whether it's self-centeredness or greed or possessions or holding on to something. You haven't seen it clearly, acknowledged it's there, and taken the energy away from it. So it neutralizes. It doesn't go away. It just neutralizes. It means something isn't yet completed. You might say, well, if I'm in this incredible state, how come they don't complete? I don't know the answer to that. It's usually something hasn't completed. And that's one of the things about the theory of chakras. That you complete each chakra. So the source is the source of life. And the next place it reaches is sex. And most people have not, they don't even know what sex is, let alone completed. It was suppressed at such an early age. Told not to touch yourself, not to do that, not to do that. You can't have intercourse until you're married and then only for reproducing children and all these things we've got in there. Oh, not me, I've done groups, I've done, no, no, no. Unless you no longer need sex, unless sex is absolutely no longer an issue in any way whatsoever, you're still there, you're still stuck there. And it most likely pull you back. When sex is about as important as tying your shoelaces in other area. So that's the very first chakra, the very first level is sex. And it has a lot of energy because it's the first, and there's a process to that. It's about reproduction. And so you've got all this energy so you keep the species reproduced. Once you've taken care of that, then you move along. Self-centeredness, survival, uh, inquiry, love, sharing. If, and as I see it, the levels don't always open sequentially. This level may open and you haven't taken care of this. In which case, you'll go back. You need to take care of that. This might open. Still something to take care of. And there's another aspect. It is recorded in the East that some people have an awakening and die. And that is the energy is so strong and they haven't completed their chakras and the energy kills them. It's not a bad thing because that was meant to happen as well. So when they come back next time, they remember to take care of the levels. Nothing is ever wrong, nothing is ever bad, nothing ever goes wrong. It's there to say, you didn't take care of that, you're going to take care of it now? No? Doesn't matter. We'll be back. But next time we come back, we'll be shouting louder. So, what's your last message? Death. What's your last message? Because practically everybody dies in regret. 
So you know people who have near-death experiences, their life passes before them, but it's not just their life, it's all their lives. Oh, I didn't take care of that. I didn't say I love them. I didn't, I cheated that person and I didn't regret. That's your last message. But then it's too late. You've got to go through the whole recycling thing again. And I hear the birth thing is a bit uncomfortable. You don't need to do that. You can take care of things now, but you've got to start listening. Start listening. There's one other aspect that's just popped up. Karma. So that's an Eastern word for as you sow, so you will reap. And that's what I see. Every single action, every single word, every single thought has a consequence. And often that word is seen as negative. No, a consequence can be something happening for you or something that seems to happen against you. I think in the East they call it merits. That's right. And they have a word for it in the Catholic religion as well, offering it up. So, everything that's happening has a consequence. So, if you are listening in each moment and respond to what's needed in that moment, not only will you die in the peace that passes all understanding, Better still, you could be here in the peace of past with all understanding and then you're really having fun. Instead of all those arguments that go inside, am I good, am I bad, should I, or shouldn't I, instead of all those, here you are in this incredibly beautiful dimension with these incredible beautiful people doing incredibly stupid things. You'll be here and you'll be seeing people doing stupid things and you'll love them anyway. Because that's all there is, is love. And I would say that's probably where we're going. I was with somebody the other day who said, a very extraordinary person, a very beautiful woman, and she said, well that's the limitation of being here. There is no limitation to being here. The game is this. How close can I get to being in perfect balance and stay in this body? Because in perfect balance, no body. You see, you can't be in a body without a desire. No desire, no form. No thought, no anything. The unformed. So the slightest desire in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Duality. This dimension is duality. So the game is, how close can we bring duality into this thin line of here, now? And stay in the body and have fun. <laughs>